Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of uh, Off the Cuff, and thank you for tuning in. It's been a very busy uh, month here at um, City Hall. First, I want to commend the Oswego Fire Department, Oswego Police Department, Department of Public Works for what unfortunately has been an extremely busy month for uh, in terms of emergencies. We had a uh, major apartment complex fire uh, over on the east side near Bosco's. We had uh, another two house fire, single uh, family homes catch on fire uh, in the days just before and just after that major apartment fire. And then obviously the uh, oil spill in the harbor, which we're continuing to uh, work with the power company to get that cleaned up. We've made considerable progress and we've worked hand in hand to, uh, to clean that up as quickly as possible. It's just an unfortunate event that nobody really saw coming, but proud of our response so far and we're still working hard to get the harbor cleaned up and ready to go for boating season. So thank you to all those departments. Uh, moving on to some of the uh, news that we've made lately. Uh, we are announcing we've broke ground on our $500,000, 5,000 square foot skate park that's going to be on East Linear, uh, the East Linear Riverwalk. We've partnered with Brad Zalicki he is a, an Oswego native, but he currently lives in Phoenix, Arizona, and he owns a skate park design and construction company. So it's great to be able to partner with somebody who actually grew up here and understands uh, our community. So DPW is over on East Linear Riverwalk. You can see him working now. They're doing the site uh, prep work, the excavation and clearing the sites so that when Brad's team comes in uh, in August, they can get right to work on actually constructing the skate park. So the whole purpose of the skate park, I, I do want to point out, um, we are using uh, ha approximately half of the $500,000 is coming from our American Rescue Plan funding that we got from the federal government. And then the other half uh, of the money is coming from a sale, property sale. The city uh, earlier this year, late last year, sold a big lot on George Street to Farnham Family Services that they're looking to develop. So what we did is we took the money, about $200,000 from that sale, and set it aside to pay for this uh, skate park in part. So that coupled with the grant money we got from the federal government is how we're paying for this. So uh, the it's gonna be a 5,000 square foot concrete skate park. It'll have really going to be a modern and state-of-the-art skate park. Um, it'll have half pipes and railings and fixtures for people to, uh, to be able to skate and do tricks. And it'll really be uh, a top tier uh, product that I think will bring people in from all over Oswego County, even central New York, to check this park out. I also think it's important because number one, a skate park's been in high demand here for many, many years. Uh, but two, following the COVID pandemic, I think I feel uh, most sorry for the youth in this community who were essentially robbed of two years of fun activities and growing up and special events uh, that COVID uh, had shut down and prevented from happening. So. I think now more than ever following the pandemic, they need um, some outlets and, and a reason to get out and have fun and stay off the streets and socialize. And I think this new venue and this new asset will be uh, great for them in, in helping our kids recover from the uh, pandemic. I think the location is perfect. Uh, we're going to obviously have it very well lit at night. It'll be under 24 seven surveillance. And there's a city owned building right next to it that we're going to convert to uh, restrooms uh, and maybe a small security and uh, slash gift, gift shop where we can have uh, uh, you know someone stationed to keep an eye on the park and make sure um, that everyone's behaving and the, the park is being kept clean and well maintained. So looking forward to it. I know a lot of people are uh, very excited uh, for it. We'll be able to, once it's complete, partner with organizations like the YMCA or local businesses like Murdoch's, J&J &J Bike Shop um, to do some outdoor programming. Uh, opportunities and perhaps some events, special events at the uh, facility. So it'll take a while to construct. It's a very big park. Uh, so we're uh, going to, uh, once the site work's done, we start building the park. We're thinking it's going to take well into September, maybe even October. So we'll try to hurry up and get it done so we can open it up and let uh, the kids have a shot at it before winter arrives next year. But very exciting uh, nonetheless. Um, I want to congratulate Paul Canzone. I appointed him the assistant fire chief following the retirement of uh, outgoing assistant chief John Chago. Paul is, a, I believe, a 17-year fireman. I've worked closely with him on our waterfront work. Uh, he's been the point person 
with the city for the city working with FEMA uh, to rebuild our waterfront. So I was very impressed with his efforts there, and he uh, very much deserves this promotion. The uh, one of our concert series, the uh, uh, Brightbeck Park Wednesday Night Concert Series, are returning um, this this year. Uh, these are the Wednesday night concert series that take place at 7 and 7.30 uh, at Brightbeck Park. It's the jazz band and concert band. Uh, you're welcome. There's free concerts. You're welcome to bring a uh, chair and sit on the lawn or a blanket and watch these, uh, this great music, local musicians. As the sun goes down, it's always very popular, so we're bringing those back this year. It's very exciting. Also, uh, we've partnered with Interfaith Works um, to try to solicit volunteers, 55 years of age and older, to uh, volunteer and provide assistance to local seniors who uh, need assistance around the house or need some extra socialization uh, to get out and take them places, spend some time with them. Uh, it, in most cases, they don't have any relatives or friends, so we seek volunteers to pair with seniors uh, to be able to improve their quality of life and, uh, and give them some things to do uh, around the community. So if you're interested, please contact my office, and being a volunteer, please contact uh, my office and I can uh, connect you to Interfaith Works and, uh, and get you signed up and ready to help out. And then finally, I do want to spend a few minutes talking about uh, what I proposed um, earlier this month, and that's the uh, uh, social district in downtown Oswego. Um, I, when, once it, when I proposed it, I thought it was a fairly simple concept, um, but what I've come to find is um, some folks, I think it was really well received overall, uh, especially from business owners and people who spend a considerable amount of time downtown. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes the uh, vocal minority and negative can take over a conversation pretty easily uh, and spread some misconceptions about what we're really talking about and trying to do. So the uh, state has a proposal uh, that's being discussed now that would allow restaurants to uh, allow alcohol to leave their premises, um, which is something that they did temporarily during COVID to boost sales. Um, so should the state do that, what I'm proposing is to create what we call the social district, where in this certain district from um, noon to midnight, from June through October, uh, or to October, uh, you can leave the restaurant premises with that drink if it's in a plastic cup and walk around without being ticketed for violating the open container ordinance. Citywide, we always have the open container ordinance in effect, which means you can't have alcohol as you walk city streets or in city parks, which is still in effect whether this social district passes or not. I think the misconception is people think we're eliminating the open container ordinance altogether, which is absolutely not what we're doing. All we're saying is if you, take a to, if you have a to-go cup after you finish dinner and you want to walk to Wright's Landing or walk to Veterans Stage to catch a concert or walk around the farmer's market or go catch a sunset, you can walk, or, or if you're at Bistro and want to walk to Steamers, uh, you can take the alcoholic beverage that you probably ordered as you were cashing out uh, following dinner and you can walk with it on city streets. That doesn't mean people can walk downtown with beer bottles or beer cans. You can't bring a six pack of beer down to the corner of West First and drink it. Um, you can't have a bottle of vodka and walk around with it. It has to be a drink that was ordered at a local restaurant, is put in a clear, clear plastic cup uh, with the branding of the social district so law enforcement and people know exactly what it is. And then you can walk with that, uh, which is simply all we're saying. Some of the other negative comments have included uh, people think there's going to be drunk people everywhere. Again, we're talking about people who go in the bistro, go in Southern Fair, go at the rooftop lounge, go to Gibby's, they have a couple drinks while dinner, having dinner, and then they leave. I, you know, I frequently visit the places I just mentioned, Southern Fair, Bistro, Red Sun, Rooftop Lounge, and looking around the room, you know, nobody is really ever acting belligerent or drunk. Uh, you know, I would feel perfectly comfortable to have the people that are dining in these establishments walk out with an alcoholic beverage. I don't find it offensive at all. I don't think anybody uh, really would. So I don't think you're going to have a bunch of uh, drunks or homeless people, you know, consuming cans of beer or alcohol down in, uh, down in the downtown area. Uh, another thing, uh, uh, item that was, uh, that I've heard is litter. 
Um, you know, we've worked really hard to put more garbage cans all over downtown. We also have DPW personnel. Their sole job is to go through downtown every morning and really all day for that matter and clean up uh, downtown. You know, uh, there's no, I guess I don't understand the literary argument because people walk the river walks and walk downtown all the time and always have the opportunity to litter, but they don't. So I, I guess I don't see the correlation if you give people a drink to walk downtown with that you assume they're automatically going to litter. And again, the demographic we're talking about, uh, could somebody homeless or somebody who's just causing trouble go down and throw a cup on the ground? Sure. But I think the people that we're talking about who are dining at these establishments and leave with a drink generally are decent people and are going to look for the nearest trash can when they go to dispose of the cup. Also, you know, following major events we have, Farmer's Market, Fourth of July Parade, Summer Concert Series, the downtown block parties, uh, after those events where we invite hundreds or thousands of people into one small area, when that event ends, we don't see a lot of litter then. So, you know, I, I just, I guess I don't understand that argument at all. Uh, certainly people have the, the opportunity to litter anytime they want, but the majority of people do the right thing and throw it in a trash can. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, people thought, uh, one thing I wasn't expecting was uh, people to point out that uh, folks in this program could hoard cups, um, uh, or they could take a cup, save it, and take it home, and then, uh, I guess, make a drink and bring it downtown without going to a restaurant, or take the cup back to a restaurant, which really wouldn't be a problem. But um, regardless, I would just point out you know, my family has been in the concession business for almost 40 years where they've sat in downtown Oswego uh, on the farmer's market selling lemonade. And when you buy a lemonade from us, it's usually $5. But if you keep your cup, which is a big, you know, durable plastic cup um, and bring it back the next week, you save 50% and your lemonade is only two fifty. The amount of people who actually do that is slim to none. So considering we sell, you know, hundreds of lemonades every Thursday and then the following week, nobody brings that cup back to save $2.50, which is actually a nice cup that you can use for multiple purposes, tells me that the chances of people keeping a 16 ounce plastic flimsy cup that really doesn't have a whole lot of other purposes in order to make a drink and walk downtown with it is probably very, very slim. Very, it's gonna, could happen, but very rare and I just don't see anybody, you know, going through that much effort to intentionally break a rule, I guess. So um, there's some of the concerns that I've heard repeatedly that I don't really think hold any water, but nonetheless, they do get some traction when they're uh, said enough times, no matter how true they may or may not be. Um, so uh, there's some of the concerns. If you've made it this far into the video, you can kind of hear, uh, hear you know, where we're going with this. And, and I think above all, we're not the first community to do this. Communities all over the country um, do this. And it's really a great way to encourage people to come downtown, to visit different establishments, to enjoy city events. If they want to drink during a city event, now they can do two things at the same time, support a small business and drink during a city event if they so choose. Um, you know, businesses have the uh, right to not participate in this if they don't want to. People cannot participate uh, in it if they don't want to, but. I think uh, if you look at other communities that do this, they're fun communities. They're communities that are progressive and on the rise and have a lot ha have a lot happening. To me, this is a natural progression given all the recent improvements and progress we've made in downtown. So uh, I, uh, I encourage people to uh, give it a shot. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how well it uh, goes over and how little, how small and uh, minor and uh, infrequent the uh, issues that are associated with it. Uh, really are and I think it'll be a nice boost uh, uh, for our downtown area and just add to the, the ambiance and the energy and the feel of our downtown that we're trying to get to. At the same time, we're introducing tiki boats later this summer. So um, there's there's uh, a lot going on and I think we're really enhancing the feel uh, uh, of our community and that's been the point all along. So we'll see. I think I'm confident this will pass the uh, Common Council. We do we are given the public one more opportunity to express their feelings on this uh, social district that's at a public hearing on a Monday, April 11th, I believe it is. 
Uh, that's at um, 710, and then the council will vote on it following that public hearing. Uh, I'm confident it'll pass, uh, especially given the explanation of some of the issues that have been brought to our attention, but um, we'll see. And I think it'll be a, a good thing in the long run for the community. So thanks for um, tuning in. I look forward to talking with you next month as we uh, have another busy month coming up uh, with a bunch of projects on tap. So we'll talk soon and thanks for tuning in.